Welcome back to Pigskin Holiday, fourth quarter, Ed the Man Parrot. <laughs> Carl, no exit theory. It may be no. Lights out speed up. This segment is brought to you St. Louis Blues by Cat Jackson's Take 3 Power to Donuts. Yeah. Anyways, so oh. now this brings me, us, the collective me, to <laughs> Our last segment of the evening, which is my personal favorite because it's my FaceTime and I am a selfish son of a bitch. Hooray! This is Mario Spina's Holy Shit Moments of the Week. I love this segment. Holy I actually shit. love this segment too because it's free for just, it's just free ring conversation. There's a lot of interesting things that happen this week. A lot of, now there's a lot of, a lot of very, uh, I guess, impactful things that happen this week. Yes, very much. Now, which brings me to Carl. Oh. Carl, Ooh. I would like to know what No Accepts Holy Shit Moment of the Week is. Well, my Holy Shit Moment of the Week is the whole Minnesota-Arizona mm. ordeal. What Minnesota, the eh? Minnesota, eh? Hey. All right. That's for all my Canadian friends. Now hit me. <laughs> all hit. right. To you, Brian. So... First off, let's touch on McNabb here. Just to get this out of the way, he was 10 for 21. Not so good. 169 yards. Not so you good. said 69. I did. Really? Plowing. <laughs> <laughs> get after it. Bro. He did have one rush to touchdown. <laughs> but that's it. Hmm. No exam. Where'd the no exam. Yeah. Let us look. Peterson, probably. Yes. AP. 29 carries, 122 yards, 3 touchdowns. Wow. And that's where Big Chunk came there's from. 21. Right he there. had the hat trick. Oh, you know? yeah. A. And it, it's a. about time for him, too, because he, at this point, he he is like, in comparison, like Cam Newton. Cam mm -hmm. Newton is too good for his team. Mm -hmm. Adrian Peterson is too good for the Vikings. He's being held back so much and is limited so badly, especially now that they have nothing else to rely on, no passing game whatsoever. It's all him. It almost makes you wonder what kind of opportunities will open up for him whenever Ponder actually starts taking the snaps instead of McNabb. Yeah, you know? well, I think they need to open that up now C and get it going. C. Tebow. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm, just, I'm just saying, you know, but right now, no, actually that's not true. They're nowhere near pulling a nab right now. No. They should, though. They I mean, need, they're not going to. They need soon, to. Unless he totally bombs the next two games. I, I just think that they just need to get him. He's not, I mean, you, you, would almost, you would almost expect them to in a way just because they have a first-round draft pick just sitting there waiting. No. Just chomping at the bit. Their idea when you bring him in is to learn behind a veteran quarterback for a year and uh, hold the clipboard and the headset and listen and learn. Well, right. and right now the 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 Vikings have put up number, they haven't got the W's, but they put up yardage and points on the board. They yeah. can't hold a lead, and then this week they just obliterated their opponent. So yeah. they're not going to yank the chain on McNabb anytime soon. Uh, one other thing I wanted to touch on with Minnesota was Jared Allen upped his sacks again. Two more sacks in this game. Holy cow. So What's his total? I think he's up to six. Get the hell out of here. That's awesome. That's awesome. Something like that. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, well, he was leading. This week was his biggest week. He was yeah. leading at the start. You know, we went over You that. know what? Well, he shouldn't have cut his hair. That's the problem. That yeah. is the problem. It's like a Samson. Samson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now let's flip the sides here to uh, the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. Cobb, he was 21 for 42. Again, no AC. 50% passing. Mm -hmm. No AC. 232 yards. Not, Not bad. bad. No. Now where it goes wrong, no touchdowns, two interceptions. No AC. No AC. No and Wells, he was there... He was there big time this time. And he had 20 receptions, 60 yards, and a touch. That's... Under receptions or rushes? Rushes. 20 rushes. My bad. 
But but 20, 20 rushes for 60 yards? Yeah. That's what I mean, though. That was their main That's their field. main threat there. I mean, Dawson. That's three yards of carry. It's not much. No. No, it isn't. But he got them the farthest. Right. I mean, Dawson had 92 yards on eight receptions, but nothing to show for it. Chad Jackson said that he thinks Kenny said. Wills is better than what the, the stats show. No, he's he arguing. You hear him? That's what he's saying. I'm pretty sure that Cat Jackson is with me from my prediction from the beginning of the year how Wills is no good. No, he's saying that he, I think he, maybe I said it wrong. Cat Jackson is saying that Kenny Wills should be better. He should be better. Mm -hmm. Cat Jackson knows he's a And he came from the Ohio State. The Ohio State. Number one. The <laughs> Ohio State. And then Fitzgerald didn't do a whole lot. Four catches, 66 yards. And it was a 34-10 blowout. There goes another guy on the team. A lone star, a black sky. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I don't... First off, the direction I wanted to go with this is, you know, first off, all right, the Vikings finally won. Right. Okay. You knew that was going to happen at some point, that they was going to win. Big deal there. No, I do. The thing that I want to focus more in on is why are the Cardinals losing? Yeah. They seemed competitive before this week. Right. Well, you but, know, I mean, they, they're not getting the W's, and they have a good quarterback. He's good. They've got – he's he's consistent. He's not great, but he's good. He's consistent. He's like a Matt Castle. Right. Right. And – They've got Fitzgerald, one of the top five wide receivers, I think. In the league. Period. Yeah. And, I mean, they've got some other options to throw to, kind of pass it around a little bit. They've got a guy who's had a lot of hype in Wells, who should be doing more, putting up higher numbers. He's not, he's no, no Sean Marino or anything. No. no, but he was so he hyped coming in. Uh, there was so much, you know, oh, he just tore it up and... What's he doing now? He just it just goes to show you that adapt you know tried that adaptation to from college you know from college to the NFL yep. you know and a lot well, of people struggle with that. I think in Arizona they're gonna have to change the staff around. Um, you gotta think too, but before Kurt Warner came over there and enlightened that program, they weren't doing much to begin with. That's true. And then Kurt Warner came in and gave them the best chance they had, mm -hmm. and then he left. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and he and he should have he he. He, he earned his time off. And oh, yeah. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame someday, and uh, I hope to go actually watch him be in Shrine. That mm -hmm. would be awesome. Uh, but the Cardinals, it's like the Buffalo and Detroit's. You have that belief that you're yeah. that good, you compete every week, and you have that, that extra gusto about you and confidence. Mm -hmm. They don't have that, you know, and they don't have enough star players to uh, you know, make a collaborative effort at achieving those goals. So I, I think. There needs to be some change in the staff, uh, the OC, the DC, whoever, running back coach, whoever. Different changes on the staff to make that team click, and, and some good draft picks. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Draft I think one, I think big difference. One thing for them that they are definitely missing right now is that slot receiver and Stevie Breston, who left and went to the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. You know, and he was just fan. He was always good fantastic. Good day yesterday, and he had two. Yeah. <coughs> yep. So I mean, it, it, you, you, you miss. You don't really miss a person like that until they're gone, and then you realize how impactful they actually were, you know, as a yeah. receiver in the slot, you know. But, so. but I think I think sometimes we're too stuck on the name on the back of the jersey. Right. It doesn't really matter. It's, it, it, this is the NFL. You have a job to perform, and if you have the right system in place and the right attitude mm -hmm. as a whole team, the belief system like we're talking about Detroit Buffalo. Detroit is going a long way on that belief thing. Right. They got, when they when they got. Um, Matt Millen out of the office, and they got a whole new attitude in that organization. Mm -hmm. They start believing we can win. Yeah, you know, they're like the Rams, you know. Now, before with Stafford, right? They, they brought him in and started building from there, and they had a belief that they can win some games. And they would, and then they got Sue and different defensive picks in the draft and whatnot. That right. team believes that they're as good as anybody else and can beat anybody on any, any given Sunday. Mm -hmm. The Cardinals need that. The Dolphins, we said, don't have an identity. Now they right. have the quarterback. So they're in bad shape. Right. But the Cardinals, they have something to build with. They're not starting from scratch, but they're pretty close. So, you know, take some work.
CT, is there anything more that you wanted to touch on? That's here? all I've really got. I mean, it was just, it was kind of a surprising, golf, not so much golf a surprising. Golf club for Minnesota? Yeah. Get their first win? Not so much a surprising victory as a surprising blowout. I don't want to right. clap. I, I, I reversed my clap. No reversing clap. I ain't clapping for Minnesota. I don't You're, take them seriously. You got the clap. I clap for McNabb. They should have <laughs> even took McNabb. They McNabb clap. Clap. It's a McClap. That. They should have just went with Connor. You guys think that, I mean, people listen to me here. This is a good question. Do you think that once in a while an NFL player takes the contract and the money and goes, hey, I'm in the NFL. I'm, I'm good. Jamarcus Russell. And, yes, I and, do. And they stop caring and stop trying. I'm, I'm not saying stop, but, you know, even our our – Nine to five, all four of us, our day to day jobs that we do, <laughs> they're grueling, man. Mm -hmm. We make nothing compared to anybody else out there. We make nothing, chicken scratch. Mm -hmm. At best. But we work hard. And, right. we, and we have, you know, just, we earn it. Yeah, and I, I just wonder if sometimes when you get that kind of money and you sign that contract, that you kind of like, eh, I'm good. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's very feasible. <laughs> very feasible. I don't want when to. You look at Jamarcus Russell. You look at Ryan Leaf, you look at, you know, all these other guys who were just, you, you know, they were expected to do so much, they got that paycheck, and they were just like, I made it. Well, look, look at the contracts this year. I, I'm not, again, I'm not pointing fingers at no one. I'm just raising the general question. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, Vic and Fitz and CJ all signed these big contracts this year. They're not doing a whole lot. Right. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, it takes Peterson is. Johnson he's, just got his first touchdown this week. I was just going to say, it just, it took. He also held out, though, which. Well, also, right. right. So I mean, <clears throat> and those guys, if they're if they're injured and they're out for two months, three months, or a season, they still get paid. Sure. Yep. Very true. We gotta buy Affleck to get that. <laughs> right, Shit. Anyway, yeah, I think that the big money contracts, um, you know, I don't know. You gotta think this this is the NFL level. They've already been to the high school level. Of college. They've been the man all this time. Been you know worshipped and. Pond upon it, mm -hmm. you know, and they get up here and sign a big contract. I'm just, I'm just thinking maybe that sometimes they becomes a, eh, I'm good. Right. Oh yeah. I think it. I think a lot of times it does. We are. We can't do that. We have no. to work harder and harder. Every we day. have no. Con we have no contracts. No. No. We got nothing. <laughs> nothing. nothing. Now, Ed, <coughs> our friend, yes, sir, host of this show, creator, creative genius. Behind what is Pink Skin Holiday. He is genius. Give me your goddamn holy shit moment of the week. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'll give you a Hell goddamn. yeah. Um, did you say I have vaginas? No. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Whatever you say. We'll go with that. <laughs> I like that better. I like that nickname. <laughs> vaginas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my holy shit moment of the week this week, folks. Uh, it's going to affect our camera room and gin. Sorry, baby, but the Niners killed the Bucks. Way more than we all thought would happen. Right. First of all, the, the Bucks are a better team than the score indicates. Right. This game is like a, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, what? And the Niners are good, but not as good as we. this score would show, you know. Yeah. But they're 4-1, and one, so... The 49ers had a very good game. Alex Smith was 11 of 19, 170 yards and three touchdowns. It'd be nice. Throwing the ball to five wide receivers. Nice. Frank Gore had 18 yards receiving and 125 yards rushing. Phew. Hurrah. Hurrah. Vernon Davis, 39 yards and two touchdowns. So not nice. a lot of yardage, but two touches. That's so again, the stats always show you know, what you're looking at in the game. We spoke of that earlier with... Uh, <coughs> Uh, Andy Dalton, Cincinnati. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they don't always tell the tale, but um, the Bucks did, didn't. I don't know what happened with the Bucks. Josh Freeman's a better quarterback, and but I think they're like Arizona. They need more weapons. I think they have the right coach down there. I think they have the right belief system. I think this week is an odd thing. It's not going to happen again. No, I mean, look at. Look at what they did there with the uh, Oakland. I mean, they came back from being down and won that game. You know that they've got not necessarily the weapons, but the determination. And they've all got a right mindset, but something just didn't click this week. And something really did click right 
for San Francisco. Yeah, and Freeman's a good quarterback, so, I mean, I don't really – I mean, he's – He's a leader. He leads that team. He likes. Uh, he believes in the system that they have down there. He believes in his players that he has. You know that he throws to. He, he, he's. It, you have an off. It, it's your job. We have off days at our job. We have off days in our lives. He just had an off day. I think so. Uh, but the 49ers are apparently for real. Rolling. Four and one. Seriously. Yeah. 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 The Niners. Yeah. And the Cowboys took that game. But the Niners, they would have had, had it. it. Yeah, the Cowboys took it. You know, with uh, J- uh, Jesse Holly or whatever mm-hmm. yep. on that big play at the end, and yep. Romo man it up, and the Cowboy up, whatever you call it. That Cowboy up. That was yeah. that was the best showing by the Cowboys so far, and I don't look for that to change. I not not to say that they're not going to win anymore because I know that they will. They're a good team. The boys are the Niners. The Cowboys, We're, yeah. just to kind of get off topic there for just a second, but I, I don't think that they're going to put on a performance better than that. I, I really don't. I, I think that first off, Romo showed, you know, that's as good as he's going to get, stepping up like that, playing through an injury, and bringing back the team. And then a rookie getting a big play like that. Right. Even though he did do that jackass move at the end that almost cost him, and that brings me to my holy shit moment of the week, which is the passing of Al Davis. Now, we've all made jokes about, you know, please, this, this, and this, you know, about death, blah, 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 it's about time, this and that. But, in all honesty, scratch all that, because this man did so much for the game of football that nobody even has any comprehension of, especially this younger generation, this man was there for the AFL-NFL merger. He helped facilitate the NFL-AFL merger, which if we didn't have that, we would only be looking at a 16-game league, or a 16-team league. He brought the first woman GM ever into the NFL. He was the first person to draft a black quarterback first round overall. He had the first Latin American head coach mm-hmm. win the Super Bowl. I mean, this guy has done so much... So much for fo- for the game of football that it's you. It completely wipes out any bad decision that he's ever made. I mean, you look at Jamar. Yeah, he drafted Jamarcus Russell, first black quarterback ever to be taken first round overall, ever in the NFL. He was a draft bust, but at the time, did you see that? Did you see that happening? The guy was phenomenal at LSU. Why wouldn't you draft Jamarcus Russell? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, I, it, you know, like it, it's he just the man did so much for this game and I love this game so much and it wouldn't be the game that we love without him. And that's my holy shit moment.